Hi, my name is Van James. I'm a teaching artist from Hawaii, and I would like to introduce a series of painting videos, painting exercises for teachers who work with students in grades one through 12. Look for a separate video on supplies, the materials you'll need to start these lessons. And once you're prepared with that, let's get started. We're going to start with a, a simple two-color wet-on-wet painting. In most Waldorf schools, you'll have lemon yellow, golden yellow, vermilion red, carmine red, ultramarine blue, and Prussian blue. Three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, but in a warmer and a cool tone for each. We're going to take this time ultramarine blue and Prussian blue as our two basic colors for this exercise. Take the ultramarine blue first, the one that's closer to violet. Take that across the page. We make a smooth, even coat, but we leave a circle of white. Soften down the edges so we get it into a circular form for a moon. In seventh grade, the students will usually study Astronomy, often started in the sixth grade, leads naturally on into the seventh grade curriculum studies of exploration and discovery. How the stars, the sun, the moon helped navigators not only from Europe, but also those navigating the treasure ships of China and the non-instrument navigation of the Polynesians in the Pacific. As the picture dries, we can then take the Prussian blue and bring a kind of ground down below. We can maybe even describe to them how in early times, uh, the early astronomers would use the church towers to observe the celestial phenomenon at night, or castle turrets have them do a little tower in this way, maybe some trees growing up in the landscape, and basically do a very simple moonscape picture. Now, so we only have two colors, the ultramarine blue and the Prussian blue. We can go further by actually going back to the ultramarine blue the first coat dried a bit. We could come in and make some movement gestures, some uh, air stream in the sky. We could leave little spaces for, for stars to appear. We could even make our full moon into more of a crescent. We could do a little bit more suggestion of landscape below. And just using these two colors, one can indicate something as subtle as this for the students and ask them to keep going on with their two blues. And you can remind them how to lift up color by taking a brush and dipping it in the water, not having any color, and lifting up spots to suggest stars. This works best where the paint is still somewhat wet. You can lift it up to paint that white and get a few stars in the sky this way. They can go back to the Prussian blue. Uh, certainly in eighth grade, you could let the, the students work with smaller brushes, coming and doing things like this, where they bring in more detail to their pictures. You don't have to finish a picture in front of the students. You can let them finish their own pictures. Okay, and then maybe back to the ultramarine blue again, doing a little bit more in the sky, bringing out those stars a little bit more. So a very simple astronomy picture dealing with obs observing the moon, cycles of the moon that are so important for the tides, for planting, the menstrual cycles, and so forth. Or maybe someone is in this tower observing 
changes of the moon and how they affect the human being and what grows on the earth, what moves on the earth. And we can have a very simple uh, two color painting like this in connection with astronomy. You also want to show the students how if their source of light is the moon here at night, there would be shadow on the opposite side of the trees. And you would even get shadow falling then onto the ground, something like this. You can ask the students first, where would they place their shadows? And then if need be, direct them in this way. So with the tower, the shadow would be on this side and it would fall then down this way. Make sure the students go on with their own picture, taking these two blues, the Prussian for the earthly and the ultramarine for the more sky colors, the heavenly colors. And they can keep working on these pictures uh, as they dry more and more. This can lead on into many other paintings, many other pictures, but that's another story. I hope you enjoyed this painting exercise and found some ideas for how you can develop your own further. Remember to not just observe them, but actually do the painting exercises because you learn so much more through the hand-eye intelligence that you gather from the work. Uh, if you want more resources, look into my book, Painting with Hand, Head, and Heart. And keep painting. Aloha, ahui ho.